Aš žiūrėjau kažkada senį video apie Riot'o naują MMO žaidimą ir ten buvo tokios, nu mes nieko apie daug nežinom, bet buvo daug spekuliacijų ir visokių įdomybių ir panašiai, kas gali būti, ko negali būti, ten tiesiog pofantazuoti, nes aš laukiu to žaidimą, iš tikrųjų MMO žanras man patinka, Rajo turi labai daug lėšų ir, nu, techniškai lolas geras žaidimas, žinai, kažką moka daryti, tai įdomu... Ką čia pasakys, nes Riot MMO got suspicious in direct news tokį video išleido tas kanalas, kurį ir pirmai žiūrėjom apie Riot MMO, kai išneikėjau, tai noriu šitą pažiūrėti, čia neilgas bus video, bet davai, let's go. You wanna hear a crazy stat? I've been making videos for 13 years. I've been making league videos for 12 years. And this is my number 1000. All right, enough for the break, back to the grind. Whenever I... Fuck, kiek aš video turiu? Jeigu čia jo 1000 video, kiek aš dabar jau įkėliu? Kiek aš kur aš? Aš irgi 1000 turiu. King Amateur. Think about the Riot MMO. I have to be wary of the fact that the people who like these videos the most do not come from League of Legends. In fact, believe it or not, but most of that audience Warcraft. from World of Warcraft. Yep. Not only is this apparent by the amount of WoW creators reacting to my videos, which I'm totally fine with, Man, but but also, <laughs> here is a more uh, statistical proof. And so, for all of you who came here from outside the normal sphere, if we want to talk about what happened to Riot's MMO, we have to talk about the big news that arrived from League's narrative team. It all started last week with a new drop from League's dev team, where outside of the normal news drops and new champion teasers, after a very long time, we got an update on what is happening to League's lore. For all of you who are unaware, for the last year and a half, the lore of League of Legends got essentially frozen. With the last story that would expand the League of Legends universe, which is not connected oh. to a new champion release, being released in June 2022. After which... Surato lore was very interesting, that when I was doing the job, I would like to talk about it. It's a very interesting lore, but... Kai išleido game'ą, nu nežinojo koks jis bus didelis, nu ir ten loras buvo toks biškai all over the place, čempionai kaip ir susiję, kaip ir nesusiję, ten brolis esu, ten rival, nu tipo nieks tai daug dėmesio nekreipia. Ir paskui nant laikui ten po kažkiek metų, kai lolas absurdiškai išaugo, jie pasamdė ten profesionalius whatever, ten writerius ir viską tipo tą, Ir jie perašė biškiuką loro, ten daug perašė, nu, kaip ir iš naujo ir panašiai, bet kaip ir viena, vientisą daugmą iš istoriją parašė, iš to, kas buvo gal nelabai vientis ar panašiai, bet jie parašė vieną vientisą, kaip visi tie herojai, ten Ari, Diana ir panašiai, kaip jie, iš kur atsirado, jų prieš istoriją, nu, jie turi savo individualų lorą ir tada jų regionų, kur jie iš kur kilo ir panašiai tų fakcijų, kaip saveikavo visam tam, nu, runterus, kaip ten tam pasauliai. Tai, bet aš nepamenu, kiek jie smarkiai perašė, gal ten labai nedaug reikėjo, bet realiai jie, nu, rajotas pasamdė ir perašė, čia buvo jau senai, žinai. Tai dabar užšaldė, reiškia, tą lorą, tai argumentas gal, kad čia, kad paskui su rajotą mamo galėtų derinti, nes, nu, tu negali tiesiog kurti istoriją, nes rajotą mamo, kurį, nu, jeigu pasaulį savo kurs kažkokį, tai turės following tą istoriją, tai, anyway, klausom toliau. Without any announcement, LOL reiškia League of Legends. League's Lord, čia ta žaidimas, kur aš profesionaliai žaidžiau. And from that point on, the only development, nu, ne vienintelis jie žaidimas, bet jo. Where new cards from Legends of Runeterra, as well as two new games from Riot Forge, which still sounds good enough, but for context. On top of that, in the past, we used to get about 20 or 30 short stories per year. So naturally, over time, the lore community went through the seven stages of grief, starting with frustration and ending with acceptance. And eventually, after that very long time, we finally got an update. It was an update that on paper didn't seem that big, but in fact it is so significant that I turned those two minutes of news into a 30 minute long video. Among these short news, we learned that Riot is dropping short stories. Because truth be told, people are too lazy to read and almost nobody engaged with them. Which, even though my job used to rely on those, I have to agree with it. 
These days, if a story is not narrated, people won't care. I mean, look at today's youth. They won't stand a narrated video if it is over so true. Long. So instead, Riot will focus their stories onto the bigger projects, be it bigger cinematics or gameplay events. But this is also connected no, with another working. big piece of information. The one that from now on, everything that comes out from League's IP will be canon in one unified universe. Ah, okay, that's a cool cut to know, the That is not how the lore used to function. League of Legends used to be a bit more like a multiverse. Now, I have never seen the Avengers in my life. Historia Riot to pasaulio kurie kiek čia 10 metų plus kūrė 15, kiek jūs metų kūrė, tai gan gerai yra, išsiro gan gera tas Arkane serialas, kur pasakė, žiūrėjau, žiauriai gerai, žiauriai gerai padarė, labai gerai verzino serialą, labai geras, netgi nežaidžiant lol ir nieko nežinant apie tai, bet čia buvo vienų fakcijų susitikimai ir kiek ten buvo personažų, visi su savo dalykais, Kaip jie klašina tarpusavį ten Game of Thrones lygio istoriją papasakojo, nu, tipo, tik su geresnė pabaigės, bet jo, tik jos ir antras bus kažkada ten žadėjo, bet nepamnu kada. Bet jo, Arkane, Rajotas turi su to pasaulio storytellinimu kaip sudomin žmonės, tai MMO žaidimas iš Rajoto gali, nu, I guess, būti geras, bet MMO yra toks sunku žanras, kaip padaryti gerą geimą, kad, nu, tiesiog nežinau. Been told, it functions a little bit like the MCU. The core canon universe is the one that was connected to League of Legends. And all its lore came from a website called Universe, which is where you can also find the interactive map. Mm -hmm. But from this core universe, you had other versions that would branch out. For example, Arcane was never canon in the core universe. Kinda. In fact, the differences in the stories between Arcane and League of Legends are quite big. Which is why the video where I explained those differences was mm. so popular. But on the other side, we also had Legends of Runeterra, a card game rooted in League's universe, which also brought up things which were never mentioned in the core universe. And so, okay, this is the different version of the core universe. But now, with the news we were given, it was confirmed that Labe, all of these are being united, so that everything can be canon. Now, of course, this would mean that some parts of some of the universes have to be retconned, because only one true version of the story has to make it through. Which is why, in some parts, there is a little bit of a confusion in the community. But in fact, it was confirmed that Arcane is now fully canon, mm -hmm. with Legends of Runeterra being second in priority. Because Arcane privalo būti kanonas, tipo... <laughs> Tokį, ten taip gerai viską padarė ir nu ta drama visa turi būti, net jeigu buvo skirtumų, bet nu, aišku, skirtumų buvo, bet jie. Yeah. It was confirmed that the vast majority of that game is already in line with the new universe. Which means that these two together will overwrite everything else that came from the core universe. Gerai, atvarko Now, lore. <laughs> I understand that all of this sounds a bit complex. But there is a Kaša very good reason kambu. why Riot is doing this. On one side, it is a bit of a reaction to feedback. Because no matter where you went, people either didn't know about the multiverses and they thought that Arcane was fully canon, or they knew about the different versions of the story, but because Arcane was so good, they wanted it to be canon. So with this merging, you're gonna be satisfying most of your audience. Which, by the way, now also means that by watching Arcane, you're just teasing yourself for the MMO. But the other reason <laughs> why this happened, and arguably the more important one, is that this is a setup for Riot's future games. Right now, besides Riot Forge, there are three big games. Aš ką sakau, blia, jie, nu, Riot ką sukūrė, tai Riot yra naujasis Blizzardas, tipo, kai visi gamei, kurios Blizzardas leido, buvo tiesiog, oh my god, it's gonna be a good game. Ir jie buvo visi good gamei, tada Blizzardas baigė savo karjerą ir dabar merdė jantis buvo, kol jie ten Microsoftas nenupirko, whatever. Riotas, kaip išleido lolą, išaugo, irgi, nu, toks revolucionavo labai daug dalykų, ten nesigindo labai į pačią kompaniją, žinai. Bet jie dabar kokį tą pasaulį turi ir kiek turi resursų ir netgi tą modelį nemokamo gėjimo ir panašiai. Jie kokį tik žaidimą leis, jisai, aišku, turi, nu, būti tam pasauliai. Nes 
tiek rich story, nu, kai, kai tu tiek resursų skiri, tiek metų rašyti istoriją, tipo, tu turi tą naudoti. Tai man labai patinka, kai jie daro viską, nu, tipo, kad nebūtų išsišakojimų random, kurie doesn't make any sense, kad realiai tu Nu, jie nori tapti kultūrinių dalim, ką jie jau tapi yra, su tu visais virtualiais bendais, ten kaip tas K-popo bendas, kaip tas vadinius, kada ten buvo metalo bendas, pentakil, kažkokie dar ten buvo, nu, tipo, jie bando kultūrinių dalykų tapti. Ir kas jiems sekas, o kad taptum kultūrinių dalykų, tu turi turėti tą va tokį, nu, pasaulį, kaip vovas, kad turėjo. Ir pastatė tas Warcraft'o universe visas. Ten, nu, dešimtpenčiam žmonės ten ir knygas pirko, ir paskui filmai ėjo, kai išėjo filmas. Nebuvęs labai geras, man patiko, bet, nu, dėl to, kad šališkas esu. E, bet jo, tai, ką, vat, Rajo tas daro irgi tą pasaulį vieną. Ir kokį žaidimą bei išleistų, tu žaisi tam pasaulyje, tam pačiam kultūriniam dalykai. Tu galbūt žaidi, žinai, nežinau, žaisi ten random game'ą, bet ir, nu, o tavo draugelis kitą game'ą, bet visam pat čiam pasaulyje kaip ir žaisi. Nu, MMO žinosi, kas yra ten, nežinau, Ari, whatever, nu, tipo. Bet jo, tas yra įdomu ir gerai, kai tą istoriją biškai labiau suvieni ir ką be darytų, kaip be darytų ir serialai jie ateiti, jie bus tam pačiam pasaulyje, tie pats herojai, tipo, ir čia pratingai daro. Games related to Runeterra, which Rad is working on. The fighting game nicknamed Project L, a kind of a forget- Žinok, jeigu trečiu įtarimą, visai manoma, kad Valorantas buvo pradėtas skurti ir panašiai dar taip senai, kad nu tipo netrajot net negalvojo apie ten kažkokį dar story savo visą tą, bet o gal ir šiaip į lorą viskai nebūtų tilpės. Bet vat kaip sakė, tas muštynių žaidimas ir panašiai ten jau grinai kanoniniai game. Nu bet turbūt ne visi privalo būti tam pasaulyje, bet kai, nu nes šaudiklė labai jau skiriasi nuo to pasaulio įgės. O tokios muštynės tarp čempionų, MMO gėjimas, nu, tipo labai tinka, I guess, bet, jie. Yeah. Got a top-down fighter called Project F, which we still have no F information on besides that very short clip, and of course, the long-awaited MMO. But the amazing thing about these games is that now <laughs> with the news <laughs> that arrived, we now know Korkis that all, žinai, <laughs> all of these will be connected. The places we'll see will exist across all the games. The characters will be consistent no matter where they appear. And their story and motivations should be linked in some way. Of course, that is unless it gets overwritten with gameplay. Now, I know that all of this may sound insane and perhaps a little bit far-fetched because it may not seem like a big deal. But that is where Riot disagrees. Because a very important detail is that Riot announced that they now have what they call League's IP team, with their job being to oversee everything that comes out of League's IP and okay. make sure that all the stories that come out are consistent in that one singular <laughs> universe. Or again, in other words, there is a whole team that is dedicated to make sure everything is canon and everything is consistent. From today, all new storytelling is going to be part of one shared canon rather than a jumble of different experiences that are similar but inconsistent. And our goal is to ensure that major events in our stories, as well as the essence of what makes a champion who they are, will be reflected across everything that Riot makes. Which, as it turns out, should be a big deal for Riot's MMO. So let me explain how it's related to that. You see, in the past, when I was working on the Riot MMO videos, we always talked about everything as a hypothetical. We knew what existed in the universe. And so we were able to pick out all the things Riot might put into their game. Did you catch it? No matter what we talked about, be it the base world, the races and classes, the bosses and villains, the loot or even the mounts. They were always things Riot might put into their <laughs> game because we always assumed that the MMO will be a twist on their universe. But now we know there will be no twists, not with the IP team overlooking it. Now, what's even better is that if you go back to those videos, you'll see that for the majority of the examples, I showed you things from Legends of Runeterra, which was confirmed to be one of the foundations of the new universe, 
which means that all those videos became way less hypothetical and way mm. more like a guideline for what is Wright trying to recreate. Or in other words, uh, somehow those videos became a lot more relevant. It accurate, I guess. Because one of the big critiques I got for those videos was that they were awful because Wright's MMO was just one big mystery and uh, I was making stuff up. So was I now? To put this into context for WoW's audience, if we go back to 2002... Oh, oh god. god, we are old. Back to when Warcraft 3 was released. If you look at all the world building that came with it, you'll see that since then... Be Warcraft as trashes, the story was pretty good. Pretty good. I should presume it's a nice, a nice job. That single player, no, that missions with us. It's pretty good. The story is actually quite nice. Then, that that Death Knight art is, that Tampa art is, that's not like that Paladin, that's like that Death Knight. Ir paskui tą istoriją mes žaidėm World of Warcraft žaidime, kai ten Wrath of the Lich King, nu, jis Lich Kingas, o Death Knightas iš esmės kaip patampa ten istorija. Ne viskas taip pat, bet nu realiai taip pat, pa, te pat sveikiai, žinai, panašytas Warcrafto pasaulis, jis, nu, skau, kuriamas buvo labai ilga laiką ir ten, nu, labai gerai istorija, aišku, paskui galima ginštis, kiek jie nuvažiavo tą istoriją ir nusivažiavo tą istoriją. Bet tipo, jo, ir ten paskui klasė padarė vovė naują, kur tu ten irgi žaidi ir civilius gazdini ir kai kuriuos ir žudai, tai visus, ne, tipo, tokia grinai, ta pagal lore tokį, tai jo, iš šia kalba apie tą Warcraft'ą, bet Warcraft'as buvo gan įdomi istorija. Ir paskui World of, World of Warcraft, iš tikrųjų visai nemažai buvo, nu, visa tai istorija Warcraft'o pasauliai buvo ir ten ir bosiki, kurie buvo, kurie buvo ir Warcraft'e tam strateginiam žaidim ir panašiai, bet jo, anyway. Man atrodo, Warcraftas ir World of Warcraft, aš nežinau, ten tiksliai nebuvo tiek konsistent tarp žaidimų tikrai, kiek rajo čia nori būti ir jau dabar turbūt yra. Gerai. And the things changed. Especially if you look at the world map. The Warcraft 3 map was vastly different from what made it into WoW. Mm -hmm. In a way, people considered the WoW version an upgrade and an evolution over what came before. But when you break it down, it also became an alternative take on the world. One that made more sense story-wise and gameplay-wise. Because the map was reconstructed so that leveling and traveling around made more sense. But uh -huh. at the end of the day, there was still a lot of canon story that happened on the old layout. And well, for the longest time, this is how we thought Riot's MMO would work. When it comes out, there would be some changes to the story and the world, so that the MMO wouldn't run into gameplay issues. Which means it wouldn't really be a one-to-one -one recreation of what we had. Exactly like what happened between Warcraft 3 and WoW. But now we know that Riot is planning ahead of time. And they are setting up their new universe so that there would have to be only a minimum of changes. And so that they can try and go for a one-to-one -one recreation. Now, is it realistic that Riot will succeed at this? Eh, somewhat. If Arkane told us anything, it is that Riot can really pay attention to the tiniest details. But for the sake of good gameplay, I'm not gonna nitpick some of the changes. So now, with all of this said... Let's be honest. Tevim prosto žadėjau tą istoriją pati, jį nėra tiek svarbi tos detalės ir panašiai. Čia svarbiau tiem žmonėm, kur visą gyvenimą skiria ten, kad rastų kur kažkas netitinka, netitikmo ir tada pistų protą formuose, žinai, ir panašiai. Dar ir didžioji įdomu žadėjai, kurie įsirašys, čia ta visą skipins, pažiūrės cinematikus, ir cinematikai, ką Blizzardas realiai labai gerai padarydavo, arba, nu, kažkaip, nu, per cinematikus tu pertiki maždaug istoriją, kas yra didžiausias blogėtis, kas čia atsitiko iš tikro, o pačiam žaidime tos mysės, prašai, nieks ten neskaitų labai tų dialogų, ten neskaitų tos istorijos ir panašiai. Kai kurie didesni fanai, Ten knygą kokią nuperką, jeigu yra paskaito, arba kai kurie pažiūri ten YouTube'es video, kur ten dvi, dvi valandų video paaiškina Lore of the Game, koks nors ten pažiūri, Half-Life'o Lore'as visas ar panašiai. Bet jo, didžiai daug žmonių arba gameplay'us, kad būtų geras ir nu, viskas pažadimas būtų geras, ne ta istorija, žinai. Bet e, svarbu vis tiek yra, nes nu, ir blogiečiai priklauso nuo tos ir labai įdomu, kai viskas make sense. Kur tipo, plar vovas tą padarė, At, jo, atrodo, atrodo vovas tą padaręs kažkur expansionų, kad tipo, kai aš žaidžiau dar vovą, kad ten, nu, buvo tokie jau 
pasaulinė egzistencinė krizėje grėsintis dalykai bosai, jos nugalį ir panašiai, ten atrodo jaunų dievas po žemė gulintis ten, kur pažadinai jį nugalėjo, ok. Ir tada su kažkuriu ekspensinu, ai, beje, tie dievai ir visi bosai, kur nugalėjo, jie visi buvo valdomi, va šito čiuvako. Maždaug, okay, what the fuck? Mes pirmą kartą apie girdim ir Kai tada žaidėm žaidimą, nieks nesakė, kad jie valdomi kažką, nuo čia buvo tie ultimate god beings, žinai, old gods atrodo, taip vadinos tenais. Atrodo, aš galiu sumaišyti čia, bet tada, jo, tie blizzardas, kai kūrė toliau, maždaug, a ne, iš tikro, šitas šivakas valdė juos visus. Nu, taip, tai čia galima, jo, blizzardas daug suvėlė tokių dalykų, todėl Vovai ir žaidžia labiau klasika tą senesnės versijos. Bet jo, tai, kad Rajo tas va, turi tokį, bet e, kas man su Rajo labiau patiko gal, ai, kaip, paėžiui, kai filmai būna, e, kur ten, ar, ar šiaip žaidimai, kur, e, nu, pažiūrėj, tu nugalėjai ten regiono, ten kokį bosą, kuris ten už, 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 užgrobt visą regioną nori. Tada sekatis ekspansionas, tu nugalėjai plogėti, kuris nori visą pasaulį užvaldyti. Nu, kiekvienas ekspansijos turi būti vis didesnis. Ir galų gale tu nugalėjai dievą, kuris norėjo visą visatą sunaikinti, žinai. Kaip ir nebėra, kur tada eiti jau? Tada prasideda kaip Marvel ten pasaulyje, ai, yra alternatyvės realybės, tai dabar yra dar galingesnis, kuris visas alternatyvės realybės valdo. Nu, tipo, tas augimas turi limitą, kur tu jau, nu, Kai, jeigu tokių modių leini, kad viens už kitą priešai didesni taip skaliam, tu labai greitai baigėsi kaip sudomin žmogų tipo. Tai yra tas kitas modelis, kur man atrodo lygina, pažiūrėjus, su runskaipu, ar nu šiaip, kur yra regioniniai konfliktai. Kur tu, nu, varysi, jeigu į vieną regioną, nu, ten e, Noksija prieš Demasiją kovoja, ir jie turi vieną kapitoną, vieną lyderį, yra kažkos didesnis bosas, bet tokie regioniniai konfliktai. Bet šitų žmonių konfliktų vapšiai neįdomu, kas darosi, kad tam žemyno gale, kur yra kitų konfliktas, kitų politika ir jie su savais nu, kovoja ir panašiai. Ir dabar, aišku, neišvengimai bus, kad nu, vienas koks didesnis ar panašiai, bet nebūtinai. Tu gali realiai, jeigu protingai parašyti, nu, tu gali sukurti raidą kokį nors, vat, vėlgi, runskaipas vat, eina ta pusė maždaug. Kur, esu žiūrėjęs, kai vaikas buvo, aišku, kur, nu, išėjo raidas, ok, gal, aš nežinau, ten ar istorijoje mėgsi, ant, bet išėjo raidas ir ten jie turi savo bosas, ok, cool. Tai neturi būti, kad jis užgrobs visą pasaulį, kiekvieną kartą. Tada jis užgrobs vis, visus pasaulius, tada visas planetas ir dimensijas ir visą tą. Nu, tipo, tas toks eskalacija, nes vietiniai konfliktai, man atrodo, man asme, aiškai, dar įdomesnį yra. Ta Game of Thrones priminsiu, va, serialą. Tai buvo labai, nu, buvo pagrindiniai kai kurie veikiai, bet buvo labai daug vietinių konfliktų. Kur ta politika, kur netgi smulkesnė politika, kaip smulkesni politikai savo žodžiais veiksmais įtakoja Grand Scheme viską, bet Tau ta vietinė politika irgi įdomi yra, tie vietiniai dalykai, vietinės problemos irgi įdomios. Tai taip pat tą galima labai irgi protingai padaryti, negrasinant visai egzistencijai, ką paskui kitam ekspansioną tu nelabai galėsi permušti. Bet, anyway, žiūrėjom įdo. Legends of Runeterra kind of became a blueprint for the Riot MMO. Think of it like an archive of concept art that Riot will try to put into their MMO. Sure, I think everyone can agree that Legends of Runeterra has a lot going on, so not everything will be part of the MMO. At least at launch. Because during my interview with the MMO team, they said that their ultimate goal is to recreate the Runeterra that we know. Funnily enough, they probably said it while knowing that Riot will be changing how the universe works. So they probably knew those words would have some weight. Even though back then, um, I definitely didn't. Which also means that everything I showed you in my videos might as well be real. Which kinda came as a surprise to me as well, to be honest. <laughs> When you have a look at the mounts, the question is no longer, will they put this dog into their game? The question now shifted to, how will this dog appear in their game? Because now we know that dog is somewhere in that world. When it comes to all the big bosses and villains, the question is no longer, who will they pick to be in the MMO? And it's gonna be more about, How will we meet Viego, the greatest villain in this True. universe? That's unless you count Mordekaiser. Not to mention that when Ir I was bus bossai, kurie šiaip lyderi neaišku, kaip darys viską. All the legendary weapons that exist in this universe, well, 
Now they should consistently exist in that universe. Which suddenly gives the entire arsenal from the Ruined King a whole new meaning. So I would recommend playing a class that can use two-handed maces, because when we fight Mordekaiser, uh, he better drop Nightfall. And lastly, with perhaps the coolest connection to these news, we have to mention the locations. If the IP team is making sure that everything is consistent, with a pretty high confidence, I can tell you that we are extremely likely to find some of the iconic places we know about in the MMO. But what's even cooler is that būtų, Arcane is... Čia būtų turbūt, nu, visi atspėtų, kad nu, tos lokacijos ir miestai, kurios per Arcane parodė, pavyzdžiui, jie turi būti naujiem game. Tai todėl ir daro Arcane, kad būtų visiškai kanonas. Bet tie miestai, jau buvo aprašyti ir panašiai ten pilto ir whatever, jie privalo būti. Nu, tipo, dešimtmečiai, sakau, aprašinėjo tos miestus ir, nu, buvo akcentas didelis. Vietos yra svarbu. ...is on the same list too. So I can't wait to explore something like the last drop. Because no matter how or when that place will be implemented, now we simply know Labai that bejoju, kad place bus 3D will be there. So, to finish off this video, ne, I just want to tell you that all the games, right but MMO I don't videos know. which I made, which people thought were totally random, suddenly got a lot more real. Just keep in mind that I am actually not confirming anything. I mean, now we know that all the things that appear everywhere will be in that world somewhere. But that doesn't mean everything will really be there. Because at that point, the scope of the entire MMO would be unrealistic. Think of it like, we knew that Arthas was somewhere in Warcraft 3, so he was in the world, which meant that someday he would come to WoW. Right of the that Lichting, is yeah. how we should treat all the information. It's basically... Everything is on the table right now. But more on that, since now we learned that everything around League of Legends is connected, in a way, literally everything that comes out will reveal a piece of the MMO. Meaning that even though, for example, mm -hmm. Legends of Runeterra is not really making money for Riot, because it is so ridiculously free-to-play friendly, that entire game suddenly got a whole new meaning for Riot. Because even though it may not be a profit-driven game, it is a game that is driving the universe forward. Meaning that it is still giving value to everything else Riot is working on. But also, more importantly, even the cinematics will show us what's going to be in the MMO. Because yes, it was confirmed that some of the previous cinematics are canon in the new universe, which most likely means that Awaken and The Call are canon, and even all the future cinematics, including the one that will feature Aatrox, will be canon too. Which also means that the new cinematic that's coming at the beginning of 2024, featuring the God Slayer, will generate some hype for the MMO. Because again, in a way, all of these parts are consistent across that one universe. So it technically all serves as the MMO marketing. This is by far the best benefit of this new universe. Literally everything that comes out out of the Singular League IP will serve as hype to promote everything else that is also part of the IP. So we may not be getting any news from Riot's MMO, but in a way, we are. This also means that this guy stays fully canon now. So we may find him in the MMO one day. But of course, since the hype for Riot's MMO reignited yet again with all these news, why don't we cash in on it a little bit? And so, knowing that all the things I showed you before became a lot more real now, here's a little bit of a hype piece to tease what this universe can give us. Kai šerodis? Per screenshotus? Lokacijas iš vėgės atdukėr. O tai, kad izometrinis bus, tai nu, praškai garantuoti izometrinis. Nemanau, kad kitaip veiktų rajo to toks MMO žaidimas ir nežinau. Šiaip gal bendrai gali būti ir wow keliojais, bet aš šiaip... Bala, jie turėjo kažko tą pradžioje bent jau žaidę su izometriniu tuo. Gerai, don't care, čia tiesiog fotkas. Ok, don't care. Gerai, ok, pažiūrėjom viskas gerai. Nu, aš laukiu tų geimą, tik juos da gyvensiu, kol blėt išleis. Koks vakars ilgas, kaip šiandien. 
Kingman is the 